Hello everyone, welcome back to the Oat Milk Lesbians. Hi. Okay, so Faye, what are we talking about today? Will we stay in Malaysia or move out? I think that's a very common topic among any queer person in Malaysia. Evidently why? Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you who do not know why, you can check out our homophobia and microaggressions episode. It's episode 12. So Zoe, will you stay in Malaysia or move out? I'm, What's the future like for you? I'm fucking staying in Malaysia. Why? It's dangerous for queer people. Okay, I'm going to bring up two reasons why. Number one, okay. it's because I have the privilege too. That's the first thing. Mm. Because, okay, yeah. As we've mentioned countless times, we are very privileged out of all a lot of LGBTQ plus people, right? So it's definitely easier for us to say, yeah, we're going to stay in Malaysia. Obviously, we don't have like the benefits of legally getting married or um, what do you call it? Fucking tax benefits and shit like that, you know? Like legally, like, we don't have all of that. But in general, for me, I feel like because I don't prioritize the legal side of it. Mm-mm. I prioritize maybe the more ceremonial side of it. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, I feel like that's more important to me because I know how to protect my own assets. Okay, that's that's the first thing. Second thing is that because the reason why I don't want to move out of Malaysia is because I worked really hard to get to where I am in Malaysia, you know, with all the things that I've built here from scratch and I don't want to start from scratch again in another country. Mm. I also get homesick very easily. <laughs> and I love the food in Malaysia. Because like, okay, you know how Thailand is like legalizing... Uh, gay marriage soon right when I was in Bangkok in February I was like looking at all the food and it's great food too by the way but they don't have as much variation as we do here in Malaysia Mm. so I feel like this is a little bit off topic because it's not about being queer but you know because I, I, I lose out less as a queer person in Malaysia I have the privilege to actually prioritize these other aspects of life yeah that is why I would stay in Malaysia aside from the shitty currency yeah I also would stay in Malaysia and also for very similar reasons. The first one being that, yes, we are the most privileged queer mm. people in Malaysia. But I think that is exactly why. Because like because we are privileged, I feel like we owe it to mm. the community to fight for the community. Mm. Because like at the end of the day, right, you really do need to rely on privilege, the more privileged people to yeah, yeah, help true. like you know, help support you, help like mm. grow the network and everything. Mm. Because technically they have more access to a lot more spaces and mm. a lot more um, visibility. Yeah. So I just feel like in a way that is a responsibility if yeah. you are like a more privileged anything in any group. Yeah. You know, especially like not just about being queer. Like let's say if you are someone who is like socioeconomically better, yeah. you need to do your part mm. in trying to close the class gap mm. and things like that. So And because of that, that's why I just feel like it's a disservice to the queer people mm, if like yeah, people like us yeah, move out. Yeah, that's true. Because then, like, who's actually going to be the frontliner? Because we are not affected by the law. So we can be the frontliners. Yeah. Like, to deal with things like that. Like, that's deal so with true. Deal with hate crimes and all that. Whereas if you... Let's say if, like, somebody who's affected by a law... Let's, for example, like, a Muslim queer person, mm. they can't just, like... Okay, they can be a frontliner, but there's going to be so much against them. Like, and yes. potentially, they'll be jailed. Yes, yes, yes. So the yes. risk is a lot higher for them. Yes. So that is one reason. And the second reason is also because I feel like... Um, okay, well, I mean, I've actually lived not in Malaysia for mm. like four years. I've mm. lived like somewhere else. And mm. I also generally feel like I do love Malaysia as mm. a country. I feel like a lot of things like, you know, the food and all that. Mm. And all my friends are here and everything. And one thing is that, right, okay, I feel like network is very important. I mean, network is how you actually, like, protect yourself. Mm. Network is actually how you grow financially and all these things. And I just feel like um, wherever I was, like, four years ago, Mm. I've built my network there. And then when I moved back, I lost all of it. Because everyone else is at over that country. And, like, what, what is it that, like, I've gained out of that network unless mm. I return to that country. Yeah. But when I've come here, I have to like rebuild my network yes. from scratch. I had to yes. know you from scratch from the yes. coffee. Okay, but I that one is like I met you by chance la, and everything. Uh, it's not uh, that I intentionally and I don't really intentionally like go out there to network with strategic people and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like when you build network here, 
you you have like okay you have people like supporting you like yeah. honestly like one of the things i realized being a queer person the more friends you make the more people will actually like start seeing this as a normal thing mm. that's why i try to go out of my way to be like i'm fucking gay <laughs> you know, in my office in whatever circle in everything like yeah. i try to make it as normalized as possible because yeah. sometimes and a lot of times when i talk to all these people right i'm like the only lesbian they know you know, and it's so sad to think about it. I'm like, how the hell do you not know like a lot of lesbians? Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. when they start talking to me, that's when they start actually knowing what like a lesbian person is, you know? Yes. And the the closer you are to a person, yes. like they start they stop seeing these things as alien. Mm. You know, they start seeing yeah. like, okay, this is somebody that I know and everything. Yeah. And also if you know me as a person, you know that I don't try to like pretend. <laughs> I cannot pretend for shit. Yeah. So it's like I am the way I am, mm. like with them. So it's like they see me as a person mm. and you know because they have like proximity to an lgbtq plus person mm. they become more like used to these things it doesn't feel like oh like you like that kind of yeah. thing you know because yeah. i'm there I'm, I'm their friend mm. and everything but also i don't deny that like some people still remain homophobic and they still remain transphobic and all that like yeah. no matter how close you are to them like it really is up to them whether they want to mm, 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 mm. they want to do the work and yeah you know start seeing these kind of things normally so that is one thing but also i i do think that you shouldn't like network transactionally i feel like that's a mistake that a lot of people make sometimes like they they want to get something out of the friendship mm. or they want to get something out of this group of friends mm. like i'm gonna oh. hang out with more popular people because that brings me social status in some way don't yeah. fucking do that yeah like it's yeah very frowned upon behavior by not, us at least by <laughs> us yeah because like I, I don't think you should always I don't think you should just make friends for like yeah. the transaction you yes. should make friends like because you know that these are people who align with you yes, yes you yes. know that these are like caring people and you yes. also want to care for them and everything mm, mm, mm. so that's actually what I mean by network uh. oh that's not really I don't really mean network okay like sometimes I do network also like in terms of my job and everything yeah. like, you just get to know people but I don't I don't try to like kiss ass with them to get something out of it. I just like, uh, okay, I know you, you know uh, me, uh, that's uh, it. Uh, 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 like that uh. is a connection that I know. Yeah, I get I, the whole yeah. time I was thinking that you were talking about network in, in, in terms of like career and jobs and opportunities and stuff like that. No, no, not just that. Like just like friendships and everything. Yeah, like, friendships like, going and to everything. Events, meeting people. Yeah, that's why I also feel the same as you. It's like if I leave again, then I leave all my friends here and then I yeah, start again there. Yeah. It's very fucking tiring. And it also, is. I just feel like I'm at a place... I know I'm just like fucking 25, but I felt like I did that enough when I was away. Like, I get what you mean. It's so tiring, you know, to always go somewhere, uproot yourself, make new friends, uproot yourself, make new friends. It takes Men a lot of energy. Mentally detrimental, yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I feel like, because you were saying you're, you're, you're not an extrovert either, right? Yeah, I'm an ambivert. Yeah, so I think it's just especially tiring for, tiring for us. Yeah. If you were an extrovert, I think it'd be easier for you. You'd be energized by that. Yeah, you'd be energized by that, mm. so... That's one thing that I, I find it very hard to give up on, lah, is like network. And also partly because the network is what helps actually doing the small work in mm. fighting homophobia and transphobia. Mm. Actually, yeah, one thing I realized is that like, because you know the thing is that, I mean, this is not something that I, I, I realized like earlier on, but I realized that people, straight people whom I'm friends with, they're a lot more educated on queer, on, on, on the LGBTQ plus, Q plus community. Mm. Like, for example, when we started this podcast, one of my straight friends, she sat down and watched all of our episodes. Then mm. she was like, oh, this is actually very educational. I learned a lot of things from your podcast, you know? So, like, oh. even, even when I interact with her and stuff like that, and I talk about, you know, how saying um, the F slur is wrong, how saying, you know, how people call um, queer men the P word. Yeah. Yeah, like, they, they, they didn't know, like, these kind of things were wrong. Like, mm. saying the absolute and all of that. It was only because I was friends with them that I educated them on it. So, it does bring, like, you know, uh, benefits lah. Yeah. With the networking thing going on. That's what mm. I realised. And also, one thing also, my straight cishet male friend, Mike. <laughs> Again, we, we talk a lot Mike. about Mike on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, because he's a straight man. Like, yeah, there's Michael's, no other reference. Sorry, he's, Mike. <laughs> he's my close straight friend. One thing I realized about him is that he is a lot more progressive because he grew up with Darren. Oh, okay. He grew up with Darren. So he has witnessed the shit that Darren has gone through as a queer man, you know? And he's a lot more empathetic because of it, you know? Of, of I mean, of course, sometimes 
he does say certain things but you know we do call him out for it and everything and he learns he learns and another thing ah, you remember I mentioned initially Kang Neng mm. I don't know if I'm going to bleak Kang Neng's name out but he follows our podcast anyway and nobody's going to know who Kang Neng is whatever okay remember when I said Kang Neng uh. he's a very kampung boy he's a very oh. village because he was from Kelantan right? he's Kelantan Kuala Krai where's Kuala Krai exactly where's Kuala Krai <laughs> so like He's from that very conservative area. So, I mean, normally people from that background is a bit harder to... They, they don't understand these things as much because they're not as exposed to it. But when I became friends with him, he started understand, understanding more about sexual assault, sexual harassment. He started understanding misogyny and fragile masculinity more. He started understanding the struggles that queer people have. And thankfully, he is very receptive to these kind of things because a lot of like um, straight men who are from that kind of background will just completely reject. But it's because, you know, we make friends with these kind of people that yeah. they are educated. And because he is a straight man, from that background, it's easier for him to interact with other people who, from a, who are from a similar background to mm. also educate them. So it's like a ripple effect, la, like it butterfly is, effect. It is. And it's, it's so good because there have been in situations where he was also around other straight men and they would say like um, racist things or they would say... Um, things that are misogynistic or, you know, make jokes about sexual harassment and mm. uh, rape and stuff like that. And he will call them out. He will tell them it's not okay and they will learn. Because if it came from people like us, they those those people will not care. But if yeah, it comes they, from yeah. a person like a cishet straight man Mm-mm. who's from a kampong, kuala cry, you know, they actually learn because they are like on a similar wavelength. It's yeah. just that he possesses more information and he shares it with them. So they're more receptive to him yeah. rather than people like us. Because people like us, when we say it, they'll be like, hey, you're so triggered. Hey, you're so yeah, woke. Yeah. Hey, shut the fuck up. La. Yeah. <laughs> We're saying the same fucking thing. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So it's because of the, the kind of person that is outputting this information, you just need to find like a couple of people who are actually receptive to it and are from very different background. People who are willing to empathize with you and they will educate the, those around them. Yeah. And I feel like that's so good. Yeah, that's so good. And I, I totally agree because I feel like, you know, when you're friends with a person, you have some sort of accountability towards them. Like I know, for example, when I'm in a room, like let's say if I go out like for casual drinks with some colleagues at work, right? If I'm there and then somebody says something, because I think everyone knows how I'm like, mm. I, I, and if someone says something problematic, I will show it on my face. I cannot fucking hide my face. My face mm. will just like turn. And then they know that they'll piss me off or something. You know, and the thing is, right, with like all these straight people, they always have all these kind of like problematic banter. Yeah. Like, that is like borderline rapey and like racist and like all this kind of bullshit, right? And yeah. then when they say things like that, my face will change. But then the thing is, I realize it's like, one thing I realize is that because people know how I'm like, mm. so whenever we are in a social circle like that, right, when someone says something like that, like no one else will like entertain it. They'll be like, uh, I don't think you should say, they won't straight up tell the person like, hey, that's wrong. But small steps, you know, they'll be like, oh, uh, I don't think you should say that. Yeah. And I know because like, like I would like look around. And then so it's like, when you have that accountability with each other, you kind of create like, okay, this is kind of bad, but you create group thinking, like herd mm. mentality. Mm, yeah. Herd mentality is bad because like, it means nobody will think out of the box. But I think in cases like this, it's very important to have herd mentality because mm. you give the problematic person social stigma mm. and they wouldn't fucking repeat shit like that again. Mm. So that's why I feel like all this, if I'm not there, I don't know if they will like fucking laugh with the person or what, lah, but because I'm there and they know my opinion on all these things, they'll be like, no one's going to entertain that one person who says problematic things. Everyone will just be like, cricket sounds. Like, yeah, yeah, you make yeah. that rapey, racist joke and yeah. you expect people to laugh with you. Obviously yeah. not, right? Yeah. Like, Embarrassed lah. Yeah, everyone, you know, you your silence is enough to embarrass that person. Yeah. I feel like it's only because I'm there. You know, I don't feel like it's them because I know how they're like. Yeah, yeah Like yeah. some of them. No, they're just like entertaining. They'll be like, uh, 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 like, you know. mm 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 yeah, I get that because, right, when I was studying also because it was very, like, um, very Chinese-educated environment, when people would say, like, let's say, rapey things out loud or they would say racist things or very colorist or say the N-word and stuff like that, I will fucking call them out on. I will fucking scold them in front of everyone. And then, what they will do is change language, say it in Mandarin. Then, because they think I'm a banana that I don't understand, right? But I fucking understand that shit. Nar. Yeah. They fucking change. Oh my god. 
Yeah. So they will somehow find a way around it. But the the one thing is that at least they know it's not exactly acceptable. Yeah. Whether they continue it or not, that one is up to them. Lah, but at least the information is there that like, hey, this is not acceptable. You know, because we can't really control whether they're gonna they're gonna change, but at least provide the information there. Mm-hmm. How do we get from moving out of Malaysia to this? No, because talking about our network and how it impacts. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah, the thing is, I still do believe that if you are gonna be a lot more safer, and I feel like this is especially for if people are affected by the law. I think you should move out if it's a lot safer for you and you mm. can be your more authentic self. And if you do want to get legally legally married, like, and if that's important for you, like, you should move out mm. because I feel like. At the end of the day, to change Malaysia is nobody's responsibility. It's not even ours. Mm. Like for us, we are just staying because we want to. Mm. But it's technically not our responsibility, and we should move out if we, if we want to lah. Because at the end of the day, like you only have one life, which is what I believe. Mm. Oh. I I believe that you don't have other lives. I believe you only have one life, at least the one that you are conscious of now. You should move out lah, and you should live the life that you want if that is really what you want and. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is so important to feel safe, and it's so important to feel validated and secure. So for those who choose to move out, like it's perfectly valid and it's perfectly understandable. Mm-hmm. But I also agree on the legal part. I'm actually not really like. Let's say if I had the choice to be married, even legally, I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't really believe in that. Like not as a lesbian, just as a person. Mm. Because I feel like I don't know. I'm I'm just very like not trusting like that. I don't really like have trust like that lah, to like share assets and share yeah. finances with my partner. Yeah, no, that's why. That's why also because like yeah. if you divorce or something like that, they get like a percentage of your assets and shit like that. So I don't. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Yeah, even back then when I thought I was straight, I also never believed in it. I never believed in like marriage legally. I mean, I also believe in the ceremonial part of it. I believe that I want to have a ceremony and everything, yeah. but to legally like bond on paper, that's something yeah, yeah, that yeah. I've never wanted, lah. Mm. But if you ask me, yes, I do want to get married. I actually definitely want to get married if I find like a partner that I want to settle down with. Mm-hmm. I want us to have like a wedding and everything. Yeah. But we're not signing papers. Yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah. What kind of wedding would you want to have? I'm I'm honestly like very typical. I just want a beach wedding. <laughs> oh shit! I was thinking the same. But yeah. my beach wedding is not gonna be like walking down the aisle with people standing there. We're sitting down. That is not my idea of a beach wedding. Really? What I want to do is have um a small party with a DJ during oh. sunset, and everybody gets like cocktails and there's barbecue at the side and stuff like that, or hot pot oh. on the beach. Yeah, I remember you said you want a hot pot wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. if there is a need for it to be more proper, then maybe just one to please whoever lah. You know, if there's money to just throw around, it's a ceremony anyway. Like, you know. But I just don't like very very conventional weddings. But I just want everybody just to like have fun and chill with each other. Like everyone that I care about to be in a space and to just chill with good music by the beach. Because everybody could use a beach getaway. Yeah. And yeah, what yeah. is like a better fucking reason than like okay, it's a fucking whenever your friend is getting married, everybody will make the excuse to go one. Yeah. Right. And then you will have everybody just get it there, just chilling, and then eating hot pot and barbecue and drinking cocktails and having fun and just talking. You know. Yeah. It just sounds very wholesome. That's the kind of wedding I would want. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't mind like if it's a traditional wedding lah. To be really honest, <laughs> but like for me, um, because I went to this wedding like last year. Oh, the one in Bali. In Bali, yeah. Ah, uh. the one in Bali. I went to their wedding last year. Um, and it was like, well, it wasn't on the beach per se, but it's like next to the beach. It was like the most beautiful fucking wedding I've ever been to. I almost cried even <laughs> partly because I guess I've always known the bride, so it wasn't like a random person's wedding. Mm. It was like somebody I actually knew, mm. you know, and had. Like closeness to because like basically the bride sister is my best friend, mm. so it's like I knew the bride from quite a while back lah. That's mm. why it like felt so emotional being there. It was like mm. the best fucking wedding I've ever been to, mm-hmm. and I was like, I want my wedding to be like that. <laughs> like I really want to. I even made a playlist of songs that I want to play <laughs> at my wedding, and it's like songs from that wedding which were like so beautiful, mm. you know. And I loved it. I was like, mm. damn. Like, There's also a beauty to traditional weddings, lah. Yeah, I mean, okay, the wedding it wasn't traditional as in like there's a pastor and all that. I don't think that it was like a religious wedding. Yeah, it was more of them like reading vows to each other. Yes, I love that. And then like walking down the aisle with people like sitting down. 
So it's like, it was beautiful. Um, and I was like, yeah, I can see myself doing that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to fucking save up first lah. I have to be balling financially if I want that kind of wedding. Yeah. But that was like fucking beautiful and I want it. Weddings are nice. Yeah. Weddings are nice. But nice. I, I'm, I, last night I was in a shower and I was thinking, what if I never find a person and I never get their wedding? This was the thing that I, have, I had in mind that I promised myself. If I don't get married to a partner by 40, I'm going to have a wedding anyway and I'm going to get married to all of my friends. I know, right? <laughs> Actually, it's just so fun to like have a wedding. Yeah, I'm going to invite all of my closest friends there and I'm going to say my vows to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so going to tell everyone like how I feel about them like genuinely and truly. Yeah. Like even if I don't find a partner. That's just what I want. Sometimes uh, having the wedding is not really about having the wedding. Yeah. Having the wedding is about being surrounded by people that you really care about, for me at least. And mm -hmm. having everyone there by the beach, you know? Yeah, it's That's so like fun. the best part of it. Yeah, do you want a destination wedding or do you want to get married locally? Well, if I have the money, go somewhere else up. Okay, yeah. because one of my friends, I told you right, she, she's getting married in New Zealand. Who's that? Elaine. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and I told you right, she's flying me over there to get married. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, and like, we're going to be staying there for 10 days. And mm -hmm. there's two different locations in, in New Zealand. And then... Obviously, I haven't gone yet, and I think it'll be quite nice. But what I would want is also for it to be a vacation for everybody. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I feel nice. like it's just very nice. Having, having a wedding and vacation with your friends, staying in an Airbnb with your friends, you know, all of that. Mm. But not too long. La. Too long in an Airbnb with your friends, I think everybody will be, will be feeling too cooped up mm -hmm. and sick of each other. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I would want that. If financially I'm capable, I would do that, you know. Yeah. Mm. Ideally, I want to get married in Malaysia because it is my act of resistance. And partly also why I want to get married, because it is my act of resistance. <laughs> okay, but obviously I want to get married for the, the declaration of love also, lah, but yeah. I'm not going to lie. Partly it's because of my big fuck you to everyone. <laughs> That's kind of what I want. And I'm going to fucking flex the living shit out of my wedding. Everybody is going to fucking know. I'm going to be one of those brides who are like fucking like that all the time. Do you know that there are... Um, <laughs> So you know how there are wedding photographers and wedding videographers, right? Yeah, yeah. So apparently now there's such a thing called wedding content creators. Oh. So they not only help you take videos and photos, but they also help you update your Instagram while it's happening. Oh my god. And I you want that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is yeah. definitely what I want. I want, yeah. I want to fucking flex my wedding. Yeah, so you can get a wedding content creator and then they'll help you do it. Wow. That's going to be me for sure. I just know that I will be the kind of person who flex my wedding. Time to get married. Time to get married. And then I'm also going to be the fucker who posts all my wedding shoots. Everywhere. Everyone's going to know. You know? I, I just know I'm just going to flex my wedding big time. <laughs> but anyway, wait. Would you... Would you rather like propose or be proposed to? Like which one do you want? Or which one do you see yourself doing? I have never really seen myself proposing to anyone. So you've always seen yourself as being the one getting proposed to lah? I guess so, but it's th the thing is that like, I don't know, because for me, right, the person who proposes is the fucking bottom. So I don't <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> That's just how I see it, you know, or no, the person who proposes is the more simpy one. And I can, it doesn't match my branding. I don't want that. <laughs> my branding, oh my god. Okay, if I find one person who I am willing to let down my personal branding for, <laughs> My Scorpio Rising branding, okay. then I will fucking do it because right now I haven't found the person that I would want to do that for. But I know that if like I really love that person, I couldn't be fucked. Okay. I really couldn't be fucked. Mm. So if I meet someone and I'm with them and I can't see myself letting down my personal branding, then I'm not going to do it. But generally, right, I'm not the kind of person who likes to publicize things that much. So even if I were to get married, I wouldn't flex it on my professional social media. Okay. I would probably flex it on my more personal one la, which doesn't personal. have a lot of followers also la. it's just for like selected few people to see. So I'm more Wait, private. Is that a private sense. account? The private one? It, was that a private account, that account? The new one that I created? Yeah, the new one you created. No, it wasn't a private account but you can see like I don't really give too much fucks to okay. mix that with work and, and stuff like that but I would um, post it on that or on my, my 
Finsta. You Finsta, okay. Yeah. Oh my god, post wedding on the Finsta, you pay fucking like 10k for these pictures that you post on the Finsta. If no I pay what? so much, I might as well like put on my main no, rag. No, the reason why I would pay so much for a photographer or a videographer or a wedding content creator is so that I can have printouts of it. And oh, print just have us. a book and just have something to commemorate the day. Okay. It's not so much to like put on social media la. I just want to look back at the photos and be like, oh. Uh, okay. Then if the divorce ever happens, you know, you, you have something to burn. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason why I pay a lot for content creators of photo photography and videography. Okay. What was I gonna say? I don't know. I am definitely the one who's gonna get proposed to. Never the one who's gonna propose. I just know for sure. I, I just cannot see myself doing that. And it doesn't really have anything to do with like personal branding, but it's like, I don't know. I've never met somebody that I really, really wanted to be like, hey, I'm going to get on one knee for you. I just don't see myself doing I that. I know, right? Getting on one knee is like bowing to that person. Yeah. It's... I'm the prize. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but I don't know. Lah. Yeah, it's just that. Like, I think it's the same reason why I don't believe in, like, legality and all these things. Because I genuinely believe that I'm self-sufficient. Mm. Maybe that is, like, a hyper-independent trauma response. I don't know. But, like, even hyper-independent trauma people, like, don't really get down on one knee or anything. Yeah, I think I just, yeah, I just don't see myself doing that. And also, I think it's because, like, I would need to have a lot to offer. And I need to, like, find that this person, whatever they bring to the table, is absolutely irreplaceable. Mm. You know, they are, like, the shit. And I know that ain't no other fucking sapphic is gonna be like this person. Mm. Then maybe I might, but I have never seen anybody lah. None of none of the people yeah. that I've met or dated have That's been why. like that so far that I just. That's why, they gotta be worth getting down on one knee for. Yeah, they gotta, they gotta be, be worth, worth scouting for the wedding ring for. Yes, bitch. If I'm gonna be the one who proposed first and possibly get rejected, I'm gonna fucking pay how much for that one diamond ring? And also for me. I, if I propose, I'm going to propose with diamond ring. I'm not going to settle for less. Really? Yeah, I will, buy a, I will buy a diamond ring for the person that I get proposed to. And I also expect that the person who proposed me will also see me in the same value. Mm. No, okay, for me, right, how I see rings, yeah. the rings that you propose with, is not whether diamond or not, whether it matches the branding or not. Branding. <laughs> the aesthetic. Okay, for me, diamond ring is a classic. La, and it's also uh. like quite... Uh, like it's I feel like diamond ring is is a classic like high value yes. sign of respect to the person. I get what you mean. But you know what I would do? I would custom make a ring. If oh, I were to propose, I would custom make a ring to both parties um vibe and aesthetic. Okay, that's sweet, yeah. Yeah, I would do that. I wouldn't buy a diamond ring. I, I mean I understand diamond rings are very, very high value and I can see that like okay, if you really care about that person, assuming finances and everything are okay lah. You mm -hmm. are willing to fork out that kind of money for that person just to show that person that you care about them. Yeah. Like it's it's a it's a symbol. Uh. But for me also how I view diamond rings is that it's so easy to get anywhere. Mm, you can okay. you can just get you can just go to any jewelry shop and get a diamond ring. Mm -hmm. But what you can't do is that find a fucking custom made nowhere else. You can find it nowhere else. Mm, that's you know, so that matches the dynamic. So that's why I would rather get a custom made ring for the person I'm supposedly going to propose to, yeah. depending or not, rather than get a diamond ring. Yeah, you see, that's why it's like so hard for us to propose to another person. Because for me, like, okay, for you, imagine going your way out to custom these rings for that person. They must be the shit. They have to be the shit. They have to be the fucking shit. And for me too, why the hell would I spend that much money? And if I propose, definitely it will be diamond ring. So name me, like, why would I propose to a person with a diamond ring? You know, if I already have my own standards of proposing, better be the fucking shit lah! So <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you know? yeah, correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Correct. I was gonna say something, but I forgot what it was. I don't know, but hey, we are digressing again. <laughs> <laughs> but who cares lah, that's what this podcast is about anyway. Yeah, so, anyway, I wouldn't leave Malaysia for that reason lah. And also ideally, Again, just to reiterate what I say, if I want to get married, it'll be in Malaysia as a big fuck you to everyone. <laughs> and a big fuck you to the country's state of homophobia and transphobia as well. So yeah, ideally a beach in Malaysia. But if not, then if really, really cannot, or like logistics or the event organizers are homophobic, then I will have a destination wedding. Yeah, faham. Yeah. Oh, I remember what I was going to say and then it flew out of my brain again. But I definitely will get married in Southeast Asia. Mm. For sure. Because I don't want to die. Like, I don't want to go too far out of this. Because yeah, uh -huh. it's also, again, part of my big fuck you to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, and I think like a lot of other, uh, a lot of other event organizers mm. in Southeast Asia are mm. 
like accepting of queer marriages anyway. Mm. So I don't think I need to get out of Southeast Asia. Faham. Yeah. I remember what I was going to say. Yes, I was going to say that say? like, okay, because you say like, okay, you are the prize and shit like that and that person has to be the shit when if you're going to propose to them. But don't you think that the person has to be the shit if they're going to propose to you as well? That's so true, yeah. They have to be the shit as well if they're going to propose so to me. So what, what is the difference? What is the one thing that will make you actually get down on your knee for one person? What would make me get down on the knee for one yeah. person? To be really honest, I don't know how to answer you that because I haven't met a person like that. So I don't know what that looks like. But I think for me personally, I feel like all these kind of things, right? I would know when I've met the person. Mm. You know, I would That's know true. that it feels right and it's like the one. You That's know, like, true. And I know that this will be the person that like, because okay, to be honest, like for me, if I'm being like really honest, I always kind of like never really saw myself with like a long-term partner, mm. even though it's ideally what I want. I want like mm. a single monogamous long-term partner. Yeah. But like, I've never really saw that in anybody. Mm. Like, I just really couldn't see myself doing that because I don't know, somehow there's always like some issues. Mm, mm. You know, it's like, that's why it's so hard to see it. And that's why like, I feel like even though I don't ideally get what I want, which is whatever I just said in this podcast, I'm going to have to be okay la, with having like multiple long-term partners, you know? But I just feel like if I meet like really someone like that, I really think that I would feel it in my gut and I would know that it's right. As cliche as it sounds, but yeah. I will know it's someone that I definitely cannot live without. Wow, but that is... It's a very like strong, energetic like. Someone presence. you cannot live without is a very heavy thing to say. It's a heavy thing to say, but it's exactly why I would get down on one knee for that person. And why I would also hope that I would be that person they would get down one knee on. Oh my god, have you seen like those cute like yay proposal videos where one person proposes and then the other person's like, oh my god, and they take another Yeah, 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 I saw that. I would love that. I would love, love, that. So cute. Yeah, I I would love that, that. Oh my god. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, what? If the person proposes to you or if you propose to the person, do you want it a fucking big thing like it's a surprise and shit like that and everybody's hiding somewhere and it's like a photographer and a videographer hiding shit like that and it's like, ooh, or would you want it to be private? I don't know actually, to be honest. I mean like, okay, I think everybody knows that I'm kind of a person who likes flashy things and I like flexing. <laughs> so it's like, but when it comes to like proposals, I really don't know. Because I feel like proposals are very intimate. So maybe proposals might not, I might not like that lah. Mm. I don't know. It kind of depends on how I feel. Like maybe whoever dates me can ask me that <laughs> next time. Uh -huh. But I think like, okay, weddings are flex, but proposals maybe not. Mm. What about you? For me, proposals, I would... Okay, I find it very hard to be vulnerable even in front of friends. Mm. Conventionally, yeah, it's nice to have it um, with people around. But I would like the proposal... Right now, I feel like I would like the proposal if it's like very... Like either just the two of us with a photographer or a videographer at the side there mm -hmm. hiding. Or it's very, very select few tiny, tiny group of people there to witness it. But even if they were there, I feel like I cannot truly like outwardly show my emotions. It's so awkward, right? Like yeah, when you like, think about it. Yeah, your friends are like seeing you being a simp and shit. Like, no, that's not my branding. <laughs> it's all about the fucking branding at the end of the day. Yeah. But, yeah. I think we can name this topic like, will we stay in Malaysia and wedding? <laughs> because we end up talking about wedding a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of like part of the topic too. Mm. So anyway, how many minutes has it been? I don't care. No, I care. Why do you care? There's too much to edit then. It's going to be tiring. I want my... the person who officiates the wedding to be gay. <laughs> the person in the middle, okay, everyone read your vows to each other. Also, I, I want it to be a drag queen. Oh my god, that's so fun, <laughs> yeah, actually. I want the, yeah, the officiator to be a drag queen. Oh my god. I want a drag now queen me too. to host. <laughs> hey, don't copy me. I'm going to copy that, actually. No. Okay, but that'll be so fun. Copy. Yeah. I want a drag queen to be a host as well. I give credits to that. My credits of having a drag queen as an officiator is from Zoe Chow. Yeah, that'll be dope actually. Mm. Huh. Oh, if it's like an official, a more official wedding, a more proper wedding aside from the beach one, if I have to have one. I also want performances. Yeah, I want performances too. I want like drag performances. Okay, anybody who's going to be my wedding all has to be gay. The officiator, the, the drag performers, the DJ, the photographers, everybody is going to be a queer... What about your family? My family? What about your mom? 
oh, I will invite my family. I'll actually maybe invite my dad too. Mm. If they don't want to come, then more deal lah. Yeah, like, <laughs> whatever like you don't want to come then what can I do but as I know that for sure like all my closest friends and everything will will make it to the wedding yeah so I'm secure about that mm-hmm. but wait what, what else was I going to say um, oh I have a very good question for you you have to wear white on a day no <laughs> no here's the thing if I have, this is what I have had in mind for the longest time if it was a proper wedding it's got to be a goth one wait I think I, I remember you saying this before it's got to be a goth wedding a goth wedding Okay, so everybody wear black. Uh, everybody wear black. Okay. Yeah, everybody so, wear black. You can wear chains, you can wear leather, you can wear... It's going to be like that vibe of a wedding. What if your partner wants to wear white? Wear lah. So everyone is... Everyone is black except black. The Yeah. Yeah, only if my partner... My, par- <coughs> my partner can wear whatever they want. I can wear whatever I want. Everybody has to wear black. <laughs> Decorations have to be black. Cake has to be black. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Yeah, tablecloth black. Chairs also black, everything black. Oh my god. With a hint of gold. Damn. That's dope. Yeah. Wedding you... invitations, the oh, cards black. have to be black with emboss of gold for writings. That's nice actually. Ah. Wait, but like have you thought of like what kind of wedding you wanna wear? Like for instance, I know you're not gonna wear are you gonna wear a wedding dress? It depends on what it looks like. If it's like those James Bond <laughs> James Bond oh the James Bond wedding like the James Bond like slit and I love then, those then you will wear those I will wear those okay would you do you have like an like a preference for what your partner wears do you want no. them to wear like a suit or like a dress they can wear whatever they want they can wear whatever they want okay yeah but for me I will get a custom design outfit for the wedding that's what I know okay that's yeah. cool yeah me too yeah it's a gay wedding come on you gotta go all out yeah you gotta go all out. Mm. This is why I want to save up for it. If mm. I ever like fucking have a gay wedding, lah, which is like top 10 of list of experiences that I need to experience before I die. Oh my god. I was just thinking the beach one can be a pre-wedding. What the prop that means like a pre-wedding. Yeah, like I wanna I, the I, reception? I, somehow I wanna have both. Okay. But there's gonna be I wouldn't call it a reception, but maybe it can be a pre-wedding, which is an evening by the beach hopefully it doesn't rain if not we are rescheduling the whole thing I don't give a shit and then there's gonna be the proper one where it's the goth wedding oh okay yeah, yeah. That, that's cool yeah sounds like a Wednesday Adams wedding I never watched Wednesday Adams I mean they are goth the whole family is goth oh yeah and I think the parents got married in black also if I'm not mistaken I love that yeah it's cool oh my god that's actually the opposite of my wedding I want everyone to wear white <laughs> My partner has to wear white. What the fuck? That is... Ugh. Okay, maybe not white lah. I'll see what the theme is, like, what the vibe is. But, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing fucking white. And thank goodness the default wedding dresses are all white. So I feel like I have more options to choose from. Yeah, That's true. Would you want to we- uh, rent uh, the outfit or you want to buy it? Your wedding dress. Because it's custom made, I have to buy it. Oh, that's true. I yeah. will literally go to a fashion, like a fashion designer, a stylist or whatever it is, and I'll fucking, we'll fucking draw out the whole thing together mm. and we'll fucking stitch the shit together. Yeah, That's yeah. what I would do. I got what you mean. Mm. You know, I feel very conflicted about my own like wedding dress. I know I want a wedding dress for sure, but like a lot of the wedding dresses that I see generally kind of turns me off because it's giving cis head. That's why you gotta get it custom made. Yeah, I really feel like I have to as well. And honestly, I don't want to put on the fucking veil because the veil is like, in case, I don't know if you guys know about this, but like the veil, the, the reason why there's a veil is because it is like a sign of property. Back then, that's why oh. brides used to have veils because they used to have like um, arranged marriages. Then that's why the dad oh. takes them down the aisle to meet the groom because there's a man passing their property to another man. Then yeah. the man opens the veil, which is kind of like unboxing. So I fucking hate the veil and I would never have it in my wedding. But like, I don't know. That's why it, it kind of gives me that, the ick thinking about wedding dresses mm. sometimes when I look at them. Just custom make it lah. Yeah, I think I need to custom make my own whatever outfit lah. I don't know if I'm going to wear a dress or like a suit, like a pants suit mm. kind of thing. I it's more dikey to wear a pants suit. Yeah, it's more dikey, right? Yeah. I don't know, but I think I'll look good in dress also. But I love the dress. You do lah. Half is a pants suit, half is Oh my god, that would be fucking funny actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. That would be funny. Or you can do like, if you custom make it, it can you can get the designer to like half-half it, like make a good 
combination yeah. of it. You know, yeah, and I actually saw this wedding dress that I, I don't remember where is it from, but it was so fucking pretty. It was like, it was like silver. Mm. Like the whole thing is silver and it just looks like a very, this is a theme that I don't think is going to match the beach wedding, but it's a theme of wedding that I've seen before. There's like space, like spaceship. That's why the, 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 the dress, what, like it looks very really like... Aluminium foil. Not aluminium foil la, <laughs> what the hell man, but yeah la, similar. Like it gives like very spaceship vibes. Mm. So I liked it. I was so like, instead of the veil, you can wear the thing where they just put on the head. Actually, they do Oh, damn funny man. Yeah, that's fucking funny. I, I might consider that, but I don't know, we'll see on the day itself. Yeah. Damn. That's I feel like it. we're quite demanding uh, for our weddings. Yeah. Oh, and one thing for sure, everybody must wear pearls. In my wedding. So I can't go? You can, just wear pearls lah. You want to wear black pearls also can. Okay, black pearls Wait, but I, but I need to find black pearls that suit my vibe. Yeah, that's so true. But everyone must wear pearls. Can that's I just it. be like on like earrings? No. Fuck! Everybody must wear it. To honour me. <laughs> Yar. That is tough, you know, because black pearls, even though they are black, they don't really match my outfits, my vibe. Really? Yeah. Just do it one day for me. Yeah, but I don't know what to match it with. I think... Do I have yeah, to custom make an outfit also just to attend your wedding? I don't know. Anyway, that'll be like probably 10 years from now. You have a lot of time to think about that then. Yeah, we're quite demanding for our wedding, I feel. Yeah, we So are. whoever like who gets married to us, you're in for a lot of shit, yeah. Yeah, we have so many demands. <laughs> Yar. So that's a wrap. Episode? Yeah, that's a wrap. Okay, thank you guys okay. so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye. That was actually quite funny. It was fun. Yeah, it I was like fun talking about, about weddings. Yeah. I like weddings. Yeah, I like weddings too. I like non conventional weddings too. Same. I've never been to one though. That's why we yeah. gotta be, we gotta start that shit. We have to. That's why I, I, I don't know. I think part of the reason why I wanna get married is also for this reason. Mm. It's not really like for anything. You want to turn it off or? Yeah. What's <laughs> our next topic? Uh? Um, let's refer to the... <laughs>